What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to change your injectors on a 5.9 common rail Cummins engine. So I am actually putting in some 90 horsepower BD diesel injectors in, so you're gonna need new injectors obviously or remanufactured, whatever. And you're also gonna need the fuel crossover tubes. You have to replace these when you're replacing your injectors. And then obviously make sure that your injectors are coming with the o-rings and and copper washers for them i'm also going to be throwing a new air filter in mine just because mine's at that point and i got this new intake horn so just while we take the stock one out i'm going to put that one in when we when we put it back together so this is going to be a step by step on what to do i'm not going to show myself doing the work i'm basically just going to say what to do so as long as you have some mechanical experience it should be fine and if at any point you find this video useful, please feel free to like it. It helps the video reach more audience and subscribe for more videos. First thing you should always do is just disconnect your two negative battery posts. And there's different order you, you can do this job in as far as the steps go, but I'm just gonna show you the way that I'm choosing to do it this time. So uh, next I'm gonna do, after you disconnect the batteries, I'm gonna remove this uh, intake horn off. So there's I think four bolts here. You gotta take this oil dipstick off, get this clamp off, kind of get that whole horn out of the way. With intake horn out, I'm gonna disconnect these two power wires on my grid heater and the ground over here. And I'm gonna just pull the grid heater out just so we have more room when we're getting these fuel lines. Now, uh, you're probably gonna wanna get new gaskets for your grid heater as well and your intake. So you have one gasket here and one on the bottom, so you'll need two of them. Okay, it's a good idea to kind of put some rags in here and here. Just, you don't want anything falling to your engine. Uh, just remember obviously to take this stuff out when you put it back together. All right, now I'm gonna unplug the uh, three injector plugs kind of get this wiring. Just try to move all the wiring off to the side so we can see all our fuel lines. All right, now take these four bolts off, take this uh, oil fill cap off, and we can kind of pull this top uh, cover of the valve cover off. Now you can kind of use a flathead screwdriver or a poster tool and kind of pop these two lines off here. And I think there's a nut back there that kind of holds them in place, but just try to kind of move them, just get them loose so we can kind of work with them a little bit and we'll get them off to the side. All right, I kind of just grabbed those tubes and put them on the other side of the dipstick. So now all our fuel lines are exposed, but they're still kind of covered by our injector uh, harness. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to remove, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, 10 millimeter bolts. And we're actually gonna take the valve cover off and uh, we'll take the injector harness off as well too. Okay, we got the valve cover off. Now, technically you might be able to leave this uh, intermediate kind of rocker housing on, but I would rather just take it off because it's gonna make getting these things out of here so much easier to torque up and get the, at these fuel lines. So it's, uh, I think it's like seven or whatever bolts kind of that hold it down here. And then you're gonna have to undo all your injector uh, lines maybe just make note of which colors go to which injectors so you don't screw it up when you put it back together and then we should be able to lift this housing right up and the injector harness will come right with it and then uh, it will just kind of open everything up for us now that we have all that off you can take your rockers out so be careful because your rocker bridges will be a little bit loose there when you pull these out um, and kind of back them off evenly you want them to kind of come up straight because some of these are going to be um, you know compressing down on the springs so and it is extremely important that these all go back in the same way because they're all going to be set for the valve lash right now so you want to make sure that when you put them back down you're putting these back down on the exact same cylinder they came off of so make sure you lay these out or label them one two three four five six whatever you want to do just make sure these go back in the way that they came out of It'd also be a good time when you put this back together to check your valve lash anyways. I'm not gonna bother because as you can see, you can still see all my paint markers on. I have I did the valves on, on here uh, when I did the head gasket, which wasn't too long ago. So I know that these ones are fine and I can just tell by listening to it that they don't need to be adjusted. But just if you guys have never done it before, maybe that would be a good uh, thing to do while you have your valve cover off. So again, with these, just be very careful and kind of hold the, the rocker bridges down and kind of unstick everything because the oil will kind of stick a little bit and kind of grab it right here on the side gently lift it just like that the push rods can stay in and uh we'll probably take these rocker bridges off just so we don't knock them loose but yeah that's what you do and then just keep these all in order i'm just going to put this one at the back and lay them all out so i know which one goes where after got all the rockers out so see i have it sitting exactly the same as the truck so this would be the front of the truck, so I'll have cylinder one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I know that when I go, I'm gonna start with number six. This one's gonna go all the way in the back of the truck. 
and that's how I keep them all in order. Try to keep these in order too. These rocker bridges, or sorry, these valve bridges, they're not as uh, important, but I still put them back on the same uh, pedestals that they came off of. And like I said, your push rods, you can just leave all your push rods in your engine. See, I have the big heavy duty ones, but yeah, we don't need to worry about those, they can stay. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the fuel lines. So there should be six of them. The back one is behind that lifting hook. You can try to get it without taking the lifting hook, but sometimes it's easier just to take the two bolts off and remove that lifting hook out of the way. Also see these uh, kind of clamps here. I just leave them attached to the fuel line and unbolt them from your intake manifold here and then just pull them all together because it's just gonna be much easier that way. So yeah, go ahead and pull all your six lines. I believe they're a 19 millimeter wrench. Sometimes having a crow foot too helps because some of them can be a little bit of a pain, but they're not too bad on these trucks. All right, once you got all your fuel lines off, you can grab a 24 mil socket and pop her on here. And you can take all these fuel tube retaining nuts off. So there should be six of them. Take those nuts off. Okay, once you have all these nuts out, you can loosen all six of your injectors so you can unscrew, kind of go a little bit back and forth each side and loosen uh, all these eight mil bolts that hold down your injectors, but you can't pull your injectors out yet. Just loosen up all your injectors. All right, all of my injector hold down bolts are loose. I left them in there, but they're all finger loose. Uh, so now you go over to your injector uh, fuel tubes, I guess, whatever you call them. And you just kind of want to pop them out. I'm using a upholstery tool just like that. Just try to be careful with them. But yeah, we want to take all six of these guys out. Once you have all your six field tubes out, you can take all of your injector hold down bolts out. So your injectors will just be sitting there not bolted down. So now we can actually take all six injectors out. So they're usually in there all right. Like they, they don't take too much to come out, but you won't, you shouldn't be able to pull them up by hand. Maybe if you're really strong, you can. But if you kind of just get a little heel bar, heel bar in here, Okay, there, I got the heel bar in. If you just kind of give it a little, gently pull it like that, you'll see it comes up. And you can grab it and pull your fuel injector out. So go ahead and be gentle. Um, the, the cylinders five and six at the back can be kind of a pain in the butt, but you gotta get those injectors out too. So just be very careful and uh, pull those injectors out. Just kind of pry them up a little bit. Once they kind of move free off that O-ring seat, then you can just pull them out with your hands. All right, we got all the injectors out. Uh, so we're pretty much ready to put the new guys in. So have a peek down your injector holes. Make sure they look pretty clean. Sometimes I just spray a little squirt of brake clean in there and blow it out with some air. I just had my cylinder head off not long ago. So when it was at the machine shop, it got completely acid bath. So mine's all clean, but I have had to do it before where you just spray some brake clean in there and blow it out with some air. Maybe even use a pipe cleaner to kind of get down in there just to kind of keep, make your injector holes nice and clean. Okay, so now grab your new injector. If it has any little cover on the, on the tip there or whatever, just kind of take all your, covers off of it and be very careful with it. You don't want to damage it. So what you want to do now is just make sure that the copper washer is seated. Now, if you bought new injectors, which is what this video is for, most likely yours already come with an O-ring on here and a copper washer on there. So if not, you need to put those on, but you should be good. And what I like to do is I like to use like a Vaseline uh, petroleum jelly, and I just put a little bit on the O-ring uh, you could use engine oil. It's probably actually recommended that you use engine oil, but I always use petroleum jelly. I think it works fine and doesn't kind of create such a mess. So just put a thin layer around there and then we can go put these in. Now just remember when we put them in, you want this opening in the injector to be facing the driver's side because that's what the fuel tube that we put out, that's what it goes into there. Now I have new fuel tubes. I have all six new ones and you really want to get new ones because what happens is when you torque these all together, this is actually a crush fit in there and it will actually, it crushes to fit and that's what makes the seal. And you got, you know, 20,000 plus PSI of fuel here. You want this to not leak. So if you use an old one, let's say that's, you know, even if you can't see it, it is worn out there. Well, you put that in there and then with 20,000 PSI of fuel, you might get a little bit like a slow drip, a little bit of leakage. And then that's just gonna go into your uh, crankcase, into your engine oil. So that's why whenever you're 
Whenever you're taking these out, you're supposed to use new ones. You're supposed to use new ones every single time, and especially if you're using new injectors, you have to use new field tubes. So it's always good to clean your injector holes anyways. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna quickly spray this out, show you what I mean. Um, I just like to put a little bit of brake clean like that in the injector hole and then grab some air. Kind of clean it all out. And if you can see, there's that injector hole. So you can see it's nice and clean in there. So you wanna do that, uh, just clean it all out. Um, don't put too much brake clean though in because you don't want a bunch of brake clean going into the cylinder. Cause then when you fire it up, your engine's gonna instantly start up and it's gonna run off brake clean for a while and you can just rev it up really high. So just, that's why just a couple of squirts, blow it up with air and you should be good. All right, so remember this hole where your fuel tube goes, that is gonna face kind of that way uh, towards where your fuel, well, you can see where your fuel tube goes. So make sure you have that lined up and then you wanna just drop your injector in very nicely, just kind of like that. And then grab each side of it and you should be able to kind of pop it down just like that. And that's all we're doing right now. We're just putting them in and then push them down and kind of you pop them down into that O-ring and leave them like that. Okay, now get your new fuel tubes and put a little bit of engine oil or uh, petroleum jelly around this O-ring. And notice that it's got the two dots here. That's just to guide it into a specific position. I think they face up. But yeah, we're gonna put all six of these in. So you're just gonna get it, slide her in there, make sure it's all nice and clean, everything's clean. And yeah, yeah, so they point up. If you have them to the side and then you turn it, you'll feel when it kind of jumps in place, just like that. And what you're gonna do is just kind of get it and try to push it in, just like that. You'll hear a click. Um, so just that's all we're gonna do right now for this. So put all six of them in, just put them in there and pop them into place, just like you did with the injector. And we'll go from there. So like I said, I'm using BD Diesel 90 horse injectors. And if you want to do performance injectors, then I definitely recommend BD Diesel makes awesome products. Uh, but even if you just want like a, a new stock injector, say you need to do new injectors on your truck because yours are worn out, BD Diesel actually makes um, like a 5% over. It's just like a little bit better flowing stock injector that just gives you a little more top end. Uh, and so I'd really suggest like if I had to choose to just put in like, you know, some remanufactured stock injectors in or just getting that extra little bit of 5%. They do make a little bit like a just over stock injector. So definitely check out BD Diesel for that. So now we're going to start to torque our injectors down. So notice how this pivots. So you kind of when you're torquing them down, you don't just want to tighten one bolt all the way and then leave it at an angle. You kind of want to try to keep this as flat as possible. So you got to tighten a little bit on each side and back and forth and just try to keep that level. So with that said, you can put your injector hold down bolts in and there's a special procedure to this. So the first thing we're going to do is you put your bolts in here on each injector and tighten them down evenly to 44 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. So you're barely tightening them, 44 inch pounds on all of your injector hold down bolts. So I have this snap on. Uh, Torque wrench and I got it set to 44. I already tightened these down just, uh, there you go. I already tightened these down just by hand. Um, so now, yeah, I'm just going to tighten a little bit on each side until I hit my 44 inch pounds, which isn't much. There we go, I hit it on that one. And that one, usually when you torque it up on one side, the other side will be tight just from it moving up. So the first one's done, I got six more to go. 44 inch pounds. All right, once you got those all torqued down, the first torque, you're gonna take your uh, field tube nuts, make sure they're nice and clean. You're gonna spin it on and you're gonna torque these to 11 foot pounds. So go ahead and torque all six of these guys right down there to 11 foot pounds. All right, once you got all those uh, retaining nuts torqued down, you can do your final torque on your fuel injectors, which is going to be 89 inch pounds again that's 89 inch pounds on each of your injector hold down bolts so you can go ahead and do that now all right the injectors are all torqued down now so you can go back to these uh fuel tube nuts and you can give them their final torque which will be 37 foot pounds now we can go ahead and put all of our fuel lines back on so i'm going to do the cylinder six fuel line and then i'm going to put that uh, lifting bracket back on and then continue all the way up and put those guys on and I usually grab some brake clean and I just spray some brake clean in one end and it'll shoot out the other just to make sure they're nice and clean. All right, and so for these uh, 
fuel lines. I'm not sure on the actual torque spec. I usually just kind of tighten them up till they kind of, right there I can feel it kind of grabbing. Then I just kind of give it just a little bit of a, of an oomph. You don't need too much. You don't want to over tighten them, but just kind of give it a little bit and that should be good. And remember to uh, put your bracket bolts on too. All right, all the fuel lines are tight. Now keep in mind, we're probably going to have to crack one or two of them loose when we start cranking the truck just to bleed the air out of the system. But I like to just keep everything tight just for right now so we don't forget anything. But now we can go ahead. We're going to put these uh, rocker bridges back on, um, or sorry, uh, these valve bridges back on. And then we're gonna put our rockers all back on. And again, just make sure these are all going back in the same place you took them out of. If you notice, these have a little dimple on the one side there. Uh, that's the side that has like a bigger slot. And I don't know if it really matters. Like I've taken so many trucks apart where these are all mismatched. One's flipping one way, one's the other. I like to put all these with the dimples facing out towards the exhaust side. But like I said, I don't think it matters too much. For some reason, the video I had putting the rockers back on the engine, the file got corrupted. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the video I did when I did the head gaskets on the 5.9, just to show how to put the rockers back on. So if you notice, it's a little bit of a different look, just for a split second, that's why. Okay, now we're gonna put the rocker assemblies in. I gave them a shot of brake clean and blew them off, just to kind of clean them out a little bit. Okay, so I like to put them all in as an assembly. Make sure there's nothing gross on the bottom or nothing like that kind of hold it all together. And I'm gonna use two hands and drop it down on top of the valve bridges. Make sure they go in my push rods there, just like that. And then I'm gonna start, start my bolts and we'll tighten them up later. So then just double check that nothing moved off. You know, your bridges are good, push rods are in place and you can put them all in. Before you put these in too, it's a good idea just to kind of feel uh, these where they rest on the valve bridges, just to make sure that no parts are falling off and you know they're still rolling smoothly. Now we're going to uh, tighten all the rocker arms down. Uh, the torque spec for them is 27 foot pounds. So you can go ahead and torque all these bolts to 27 foot pounds. Okay, once all the rockers are torqued down, you can kind of grab a rag and just kind of Try to clean up this flange all the way along and we're gonna put that injector harness slash rocker housing kind of cover back on. Just inspect your gasket here, but usually you could reuse these, just kind of look for any, you know, rips or tears in it, but you know, 99% of the time they're fine to just reuse them. All right, once this is tightened down, you can put your injector uh, wiring nuts, or I guess whatever you wanna call these, hook your injectors up. Uh, now these, I think they're only like 11 inch pounds they get torqued to, so I do it by hand. I just use a screwdriver usually, but like just do not over tighten these because you can break these terminals off very easy. So just a very, 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 very gentle snug on these. And that's all they need. So don't over tighten them. All right, all my injector wires are on. So again, grab a rag and kind of just clean up this ceiling surface all the way around. And then you can inspect your gasket on here as well. But like these ones, I've never ever had to change them. So you should be fine. Put this guy back on, tighten him down. Again, I'm not sure on torque spec, just, you know, whatever feels good, don't over tighten it. But just, you know, once you kind of feel it tighten, give it a good snug, that's it. We'll put this valve cover on. All right, now you can pop these two pipes back on, kind of start getting your electrical back over here. Uh, but I'm gonna put that uh, top valve well, the valve cover, cover, I guess, on. Now, just remember, you gotta take this thing off to pop it on. All right, this is all back on. I got all my wiring plugged in. I think there's a couple sensors and your three injector plugs. I got it bolted up here. This, uh, these go on the back of your intake horn. But uh, yeah, now you can either reuse these gaskets or get new ones on, but you can put your grid heater and your intake horn back on. I got that new Banks one, so I gotta figure out how that's gonna fit in here, but you can go ahead and yeah, get your intake horn and grid heater back on. Okay, I got the new intake horn in, and uh, I think we're all ready. We're gonna hook up the batteries right now. Uh, once you got your negative post back hooked up, we'll uh, start bleeding this fuel system and see if we can get a runner. All right, batteries are hooked back up. So what I did is I went to this fuel line right here because it's easy to get at and I just loosened it 
you know, not even a half a turn. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get a guy and he's gonna crank it. And as soon as we see this start to drip, I don't know if it'll pick up on the camera or not, but when you see this start to drip, that's when you say, okay, shut it off, tighten it back up, and then you just crank and it should fire shortly after that. Okay, I got the key on right now. I got a fast lift pump, so it should be making sure we got lots of fuel up here. Just make sure that you got no fan stuck in your egg or, or sorry, any eggs stuck in the fan or tools like that. Uh, just kind of make sure it's all nice and clean and uh, then you can start to crank. So, all right, give it a crank. Okay, so you see what happened there was there was a little bit of brake cleaning whatever from when we sprayed it out. So it instantly started running. It's burned that off. So now we can continue to crank. So, um, okay, actually shut off. Yeah, leave it off. Cause we already have uh, a drip there. So, I'm gonna tighten that up and then we'll crank it again and see if we fire up. Okay, I got that tight. So, all right, give it a crank. We'll see if it fires. Give it another one. So once you have it running, just look over it, check it for leaks, fuel leaks, you know, um, you know, just see how it is. You're going to have to go take it for a test drive and everything, but that's basically it to change your injector. So if uh, you, if the video helped you, please like, and please subscribe, follow for more how to videos, more diesel vlogs. I'm also going to put another video, I'll put a little link up here on the, the video, the more vlog style video on taking this thing out and testing out these new injectors, rolling some coal, seeing uh, you know how much of a difference they make over stock. So definitely stay tuned for that and uh, check me out on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. But yeah, thanks guys for watching. I hope to see you on the next video.